Well, what has happened today is part of the process of the United Kingdom and Gibraltar and indeed the other territories leaving the European Union. This is part of the process. Phase one has happened and phase one closed. Now they moved on to phase two as a result of the progress which, ha which had happened on the first phase. And the European Commission has proposed recommendations for a new council decision which gives a mandate, which give, would give them a mandate to continue the negotiations into the next phase. The next phase is this transition deal and the withdrawal and the future relationship agreement. The, the, these, uh, these council negotiating directives if, if will be discussed in January at a meeting of uh, EU ambassadors and adopted at the end of January in relation to the withdrawal and in relation to the actual future relationship agreement they will, they will not be adopted until March. So we're talking about a document which is still I suppose under discussion and under review and still pending adoption by the European Council itself. Well, the EU has always supported its members' position and uh, it agreed on Spain's request for the veto, Clause 24, and Mariano Rajoy said the other day that he didn't want Gibraltar to be part of the transition agreement. Well, we, we saw that with Ireland, where the European Council, basically the other countries of the European Union, all sided with Ireland in relation to the arguments that, that, we're having, oh, that we were having last month and which finally led to the closure of the first phase of the negotiations. Our position is very simple. I mean, the the position is that uh, the, United, the United Kingdom will have a transition. It's expected to end in December of 2020. It will mean that they will largely continue it with the same relationship with the European Union that they have now, but they will not be members uh, of the European Union during their transition. What we're asking for is that Gibraltar should be treated in the same way, that our terms of membership, our existing relationship with the European Union should be carried forward into the transition. Now, Spain may have a different view. I mean, Spain also felt that um, Clause 24, their so-called uh, veto, their purported veto, would apply, for example, to the withdrawal agreement. Now, that in the end did not transpire. There was no Spanish veto on the, withdrawal, on the actual withdrawal agreement, and there are aspects of that agreement which apply to Gibraltar. Now, the, the, the transitional provision, the transitional agreement, will be part of that withdrawal. It will be one agreement. So, on that basis, we our view, and indeed the view of the United Kingdom, that it should apply to Gibraltar as well. So are you saying you are expecting Gibraltar to be included in any transitional arrangements despite Spain's objections? I'm saying that the, the position of the government is that, that that should be the case. Spain is arguing, on the other hand, that they have this clause, uh, clause 24, which allows them to veto the application of any agreement between the European Union and the United Kingdom to Gibraltar after the United Kingdom has left the European Union. That is the so-called second veto. Remember, all countries in the EU have a veto on everything that is to be agreed. But Spain will have this additional second veto on how that applies to Gibraltar, according to the argument that they put forward. It does not apply clearly to the withdrawal agreement. Our view is that in terms of the transition and the future relationship, it should not apply either. In fact, our contention is, our legal advice, is that that clause is actually illegal and obviously we would consider all the options very carefully, including the option of taking legal action if we have to. If it does look like the issue of Gibraltar might scupper the UK's transition arrangements uh, once it leaves the EU, would you accept that the UK would enter into bilateral talks with Spain? Well, let me say very clearly that we welcome, first of all, the assurances received from the Prime Minister, Theresa May, which were given today and indeed yesterday, in relation to the application to Gibraltar of the negotiations in respect of the transitional agreement and also in respect of the withdrawal agreement. But those guarantees have to be seen in the context of other guarantees we've also received. And there was a very clear uh, guarantee given to the Chief Minister by David Davis, a Secretary of State for exiting the European Union, who told us the UK will not do a deal without Gibraltar. There have also been guarantees given by Theresa May, the Prime Minister herself, on National Day, when she spoke about safeguarding the people and safeguarding the economy of Gibraltar going forward. So I think we need to see everything in that context. But let me say also that it shows incredible bad faith on the part of Madrid that they should seek to apply the, this, uh, this veto clause to the, to the transition agreement and because they have nothing to gain by it. I mean, what is it that Spain has to gain 
by, by, by purporting to veto the application of a transitional agreement to Gibraltar. They have absolutely nothing to gain except to generate uncertainty amongst pe uh, mayors on the Spanish side of the border, amongst workers who need to come to Gibraltar every day to work. They gain absolutely nothing. And it also reflects very badly on the European Council itself that they should seek to slap in the face in this way people who voted 96% to remain in the European Union. Well, as far as the Spanish workers are concerned, Alfonso Tassis, the Spanish Foreign Secretary, has today uh, assured mayors um, in the Campo de Gibraltar that the um, cross-border situation will maintain its status quo. So, as far as Spain are concerned, they're not going to lose out on anything. Well, it, it's not very clear, because if you look at what, what workers and mayors and others themselves say, trade unions, chambers of commerce, there is a general concern as to what may happen going forward. And uh, our, our view is that, look, in the final analysis, a sensible and uh, an orderly and a well-managed Brexit, as we keep on saying, is not only in our interests, it's also in Spain's interests as well. So it doesn't make any sense that at the same time that they should, they should reassure people for the uncertainty that they themselves are responsible for generating. Well, Theresa May has given assurances in Parliament over the last couple of days that Gibraltar would be covered, that it wouldn't be excluded. But would you consider that language sufficient to be taken as a cast iron guarantee. The government certainly welcomes the statements made by the Prime Minister in relation to the transition and in relation to the future relationship agreement. I mean, she was very clear that Gibraltar will be a part of those negotiations. The, and I think it was also very useful and very relevant to see the, that the hard work being put in by the government, the Chief Minister, the Attorney General and myself in relation to Brexit, in relation to lobbying other political parties in the United Kingdom, is now coming across very strongly in Parliament itself, where you saw the Prime Minister be, ha, have been questioned yesterday by representatives of the Conservative Party, the Labour Party, the Scottish National Party and the Democratic Unionists in one single session. I think it shows there is a huge degree of cross-party support for Gibraltar and that our friends in Parliament are certainly there to stand up for us and to keep an eye on the British government. But like I said earlier, the British government itself is being extremely supportive of Gibraltar and we welcome that. Are you saying that you are not expecting any bilateral talks to take place? No, what we were, say, we were saying, the, the, these are, there are two different issues. One issue is whether the United Kingdom engages with Spain on all the Brexit issues which affect them, and that includes Gibraltar as one of them. And in that context, the government is quite happy to see technical talks, non-political talks, non-sovereignty talks going forward, because at the end of it, there is a relationship we need to address, and we need to maintain how the border is going to work post-Brexit, for example. So there are issues that need to be discussed. You can, only, you can only solve those issues by sitting down and talking. In the hypothetical scenario that Gibraltar isn't included in transitional arrangements, what happens at the frontier on the 29th of March 2019? Well, th first of all, it's a hypothetical situation. There's no guarantee and no certainty that, that that would happen. The view of the United Kingdom and the view of the Gibraltar government is that the transitional agreement, as I said earlier, is part of the withdrawal agreement, so therefore it applies and it should apply to Gibraltar. Now, it, in, in, in terms of a worst-case scenario, we're looking at the Schengen border code. That is what we have already. Gibraltar is not in Schengen because the United Kingdom is not in Schengen, so the Schengen border code would apply. But there are, as I, we, I've said in the past, a whole range of of different options and solutions for the border, which going forward and with a political grill, we could certainly explore.